Hey everybody, okay, in this particular video, we're going to learn how to find the vertex and intercepts for the quadratic function. And this is one of those problems that you have encountered in 8.4 and connect, where it asks you for various pieces and parts dealing with the quadratic function, and then it asks you to graph or select the proper graph for the function. So, in this particular problem, you're asked to find the x-intercept, the domain, the range, the vertex, and the y-intercept. And then you're asked to select the graph that represents the function. Now, the function that we are looking at is f of x. Let me just make here that would be nice is. Uh, grab the picture to my hand and get some ink here is f of x equals x squared plus 4x minus 96. That's the function that we're looking at. And the first thing that we're going to do is find the x-intercept. So the first thing that we're going to do is find the x-intercept. Now to find the x-intercept, what we have to do is we have to rewrite this as x squared plus 4x minus 96 equals 0, and we need to solve for x. And to solve for x, we have several ways we can do that. We can complete the square. Or use the quadratic formula, quadratic formula, or we can just guess and check. But for this particular one, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use a quadratic formula. And to use a quadratic formula, the first thing that you need to do is you need to identify the values for A, B, and C, where A is going to be the numerical coefficient on your squared term, B is going to be the numerical coefficient on your x term, and C is just going to be your constant term. Now, recall from several sections back that any time you have a variable that doesn't have a number in front of it, the number in front of it is automatically assumed to be 1. And since there's no negative sign, we assume that 1 is positive. Now, that's important because any time the, the numerical coefficient on your square term is positive, that means that parabola or the graph of the quadratic is going to open upward. If it's negative, then the graph of the function is going to open downwards. So here, our numerical coefficient is 1, and it's positive, so we know that our graph is going to open upwards. B is going to be the numerical coefficient on x, and that also includes a sign, so it's going to be positive 4. So here we're just going to write 4. And C, which includes the constant term, which is both the number and its sign, is just negative 96. Now recall the quadratic formula says x is going to equal negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. So then all we need to do now is just plug in or substitute in for a, b, and c. So negative b, and b is 4, so we have negative b plus or minus, under the radicand, b squared, well, 4 squared is 16, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 96, all over 
2 times a and 2 times 1 is just 2. And I am just going to clean this up a little bit because this is just kind of bugging me here. And we'll just put maybe it right back here. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do the rest of the math to figure out what this is going to be. So we've got negative 4 plus or minus. Go ahead and do the math under this radicand. So we've got 16, and then we've got negative 4 times 1, that's negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 96 is positive 386, all over 2, which is going to be equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 400 divided by 2, but that is just negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 400 is 20 divided by 2. Now once you get to this point, what you need to notice is you've got this plus or minus. So what this tells you is you've got two different values for x. Unless, of course, you've got a perfect square binomial, you have two values for x. One value is going to be derived from taking negative 4 minus 20 divided by 2. And the other value you're going to determine by taking negative 4 and using plus 20 divided by 2. So one of the values are going to be determined through subtraction in the numerator. The other one's going to be determined through addition in the numerator. And so we go ahead and we do the math. We get negative 24 divided by 2. Well, that's just negative 12. And here we get 16 divided by 2. Well, that's just 8. So we know that our x-intercept, and the x-intercept is where the graph crosses the x-axis. We know that it crosses the x-axis at negative 12 and positive 8. So we come up here and in our boxes here we know that and I'm just going to write this in red. We know that one of the intercepts, now you have to think of this in terms of this is going to be my x value, my y value, my x value, my y value. Well, now with the x intercepts, y is always going to be 0 because whenever the graph crosses the x intercept, at that point, y is 0. So we have one value that's going to be negative 12, and the other value is going to be positive 8. And we found those two values using the quadratic formula. Now the next thing that we're asked is, what is the domain? Well, in the quadratic function, the domain is all real numbers. So it includes all the negative numbers, it includes 0, and it includes all the positive numbers. And when we represent that using interval notation, we represent that by saying that it includes all numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. And whenever you're representing negative infinity, you always need to make sure that this negative sign here is present. Okay? You can't say positive infinity to positive infinity. It's negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? Because if you do positive infinity to positive infinity, it's going to be flagged incorrect, and it is incorrect. It is negative infinity, which represents starting from any big, huge negative number up through zero, and then all the way through all the numbers, um any large number through positive infinity. Or it just keeps going on and on and on in both directions, in other words. 
Now, we're going to hold off from the range for a minute because in order to say what the range is going to be, we've got to figure out what our vertex is. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to move it over a little bit, scooch this over a little bit, and we're going to find our vertex. And we're going to use kind of sort of a little different color here. So the second thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the vertex. So we're going to find vertex. And to find the vertex, remember, they give you a formula that says that x is equal to negative b over 2a. Now, what you have to remember about that is when we're talking about the vertex, we're talking about the point that's going to be the lowest. Now, if you have a parabola that opens upward like this, your vertex is going to be the lowest point on the graph. If you have a vertex that opens downward, then your vertex is going to be the highest point on the graph. Remember that your vertex will open upward when A is positive, downward when A is negative. So with all of that being said, what you need to notice is it says X equals negative B over 2A. So what you're actually finding is the X value for the point for the vertex. So you've got X, Y here and you've got x, y here. So you're finding the x value, and once you find the x value, then you need to plug it back into the function to find what y is. So here, for the vertex, the x coordinate for a vertex is going to be negative b. Well, remember we said b was 4, so it's going to be negative 4 divided by 2a, where a is 1, so 2 times 1 is just 2, and that's going to give us negative 2. Now, since we know that x is negative 2, we take that negative 2, and we put it back into this function. So our function is x squared plus 4x minus 96, and here we have negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 minus 96. So we've got negative 2 squared, well that's 4, negative 2 times positive 4, that's negative 8, minus 96. And if we go ahead, and remember, when we wrote this, we can write this as f of negative 2, meaning substitute negative 2 and follow your x value. So we've got 4 minus 8, that's negative 4. Negative 4 plus negative 96 is going to give us negative 100. So what we know about our vertex so far, or what we know about our graph so far, is that it's going to cross the x-axis at negative 12 and 8, and it's going to have a vertex of negative 2 and negative 100. Well, let's go over here and let's start looking at what we know so far. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to grab some more red ink. So our vertex is negative 2, negative 100. Remember this box represents x, this one represents y. So our range, the vertex again, is either going to be the lowest point on the graph or the highest point on the graph. Well what we want, our range is always going to go from either the lowest point on the graph up or down, depending on how the parabola is, with the lowest point on the graph up, or the highest point on the graph down. Excuse me, I misspoke. So in this particular case, we know the range is going to be the lowest point. So our range is going to go, and the range always represents our 
Y values, and let me get another color here, yellow. The range always represents our Y value, so the range is always going to go here from negative 2 to negative 100, and it's going to go all the way up through positive infinity. So we know that our range is going to go from negative 100, our y values are going to go from negative 100 all the way to positive infinity. And in the drop down menu, that's what we would select. We would select positive infinity. The last piece of information that we need is our x-intercept. Well, our x-intercept Our x-intercept is found, oh no, I'm sorry, our y-intercept. Our y-intercept is just found and find by letting x equals 0. So in our function here, where we have x squared my plus 4x minus 96, if we substitute 0 in, then we have 0 squared plus 4 times 0 minus 96. And remember, 0 squared is 0. 0 times anything is 0. So this sum here is 0. 0 minus 96 is just negative 96. So our y-intercept, which is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis, is going to be, now if it just crosses the y-axis, x is going to be 0, and y is going to be negative 96, because we want the y-intercept. So we're looking for a graph here that meets the following characteristics. It crosses the x-intercept at negative 12 and 8. So it crosses the x-axis at negative 12 and 8. It has a vertex of negative 2. And positive 100. And it goes from 100 up to positive infinity. Now let's check out all of these graphs. First of all, we only want the graphs that look like or that can represent a quadratic formula, function. Well, that leaves out this one because quadratic functions are always U-shaped. So this is not a quadratic function. Now next, let's look at this one. So the lowest point here, we said that the vertex is negative 2 and 100. Well, over here we have maybe what could be negative 2, but the problem is, is that this isn't negative 100, this is positive 100. So it's not this one because of the vertex. Okay, so the vertex is So in order to pick the right graph, we got to have the right pieces and parts of it first. So we're left between these two. So now let's see about these two. Okay, so here, notice that we look at this vertex. This vertex is like almost positive 2. Well, the vertex that we need is negative 2. So this one is also has the wrong vertex. So, so it's not this one. The vertex is wrong.
So that only leaves us one more since we rolled out three. That leaves us one more. So now let's check this out. Well, let me see. Is the vertex right? Well, our vertex has to be negative 2 and 100. And that checks out. Okay, so that's that point there. And it has to cross the x-axis at negative 12 and positive 8. Well, let me see. Here would be about positive 8. And here would be about negative 12. And let me see. It needs to cross the y-axis at negative 96 and it does so here would be your x-intercepts and your y-intercept would be right here where it crosses the y-axis at negative 96 so this is the one that you would ultimately want to select and that's how we figure out all of the pieces and parts when we have a um, problem like this to solve in connect map. So I hope this is helpful to you and if you have any questions let me know. Uh, till then talk to all of y'all later. Bye bye.